In this video, you're going to learn how to make and use a transparent whiteboard that will take your facilitation on video calls to the next level. You'll create a wow effect that will boost your audience engagement. You'll get a step-by-step -step guide on how to set it up. And I'll be covering the case where you're using a drawing pad on PC, something like this. But also an iPad with a stylus, like this one. But if you don't have a stylus, no worries, you can still use your finger. And if you want to see a few examples on how I use this feature and how you could use transparent whiteboards, then watch the video till the end. Let's go! To create a transparent whiteboard, we'll need OBS. OBS is the Open Broadcaster software, a free software that will allow you to enhance your video calls. So if you've not installed OBS yet, I'm putting the link to my beginner's tutorial in the card up here. Go watch the video, install OBS and then come back here. I'll be waiting for you. Okay, great, you have OBS. Let's start from scratch. I've already renamed the default scene to Whiteboard. However, there's no source in it. So we'll do it together from the beginning step by step. First thing, let's create a new scene where we will put the camera. Click on plus and then rename it to, for example, my webcam. The scene is now empty. We need to add the webcam source. To do that, click on plus and then video capture device. As I'm using my Canon camera as a webcam, I will call it Canon camera and click on OK. I have connected it with USB, so the resolution that it takes is not Full HD, but that doesn't matter for now. So let's click on Transform Fit to Screen. My background looks a little grey and I'm a bit underexposed, so let's fix this. If you want to learn how to do it, check the link to my video in the description. Ok, that looks decent. The next thing to do is to add another scene where we will place the whiteboard. In this first case, we'll open the whiteboard on PC and we will capture the PC display. Actually, I had already renamed the default scene to whiteboard, so I will use that one. So in this empty scene, we want to add a display capture source. And we can call it whiteboard display. Here we will select the display where I will be opening the whiteboard. Okay, great, let's put OBS in standby for the moment and create the whiteboard. What I'm going to show you works with whatever application that allows you to draw, starting from Paint, but even Microsoft PowerPoint. However, my recommendation is to use a whiteboard with an infinite canvas. That can be Microsoft Whiteboard, Google Whiteboard, Miro, Mural, Klaxoon, or whichever is your preferred tool. If you're interested in having an overview on the most used whiteboards, check the video up here. You'll also find the link in the video description. I'll show you how to do it on Microsoft Whiteboard and Klaxoon, but the instructions will apply to any other board. So so let's open the board. That's a new Klaxoon board that I've just opened and that's a Microsoft whiteboard. The key step that will allow us to give a transparent effect to the whiteboard is something similar to what we do with green screen. We select one color on the video and we tell the software to get rid of that color. We'll make the whiteboard transparent by getting rid of the background and only leaving the content on it. So the first thing to do is to select a whiteboard background color that we will not use for the content. We can do it on Klaxoon by inserting a picture as a background. Let's go to Options and then Locked Background. I have previously created a large green image, so I'll browse for it on my PC. Here it is and I'll make it even bigger by increasing the size. This picture is about 6K by 6K pixels and according to my experience that's enough space to work on the whiteboard. Let's zoom back in. Microsoft Whiteboard doesn't allow to insert a picture background. However, you can pick the background from a limited number of colors. You go to Format Background and then choose among 10 colors. I've chosen this light green. You can choose whatever color you wish, but the important thing to know is that you will not be able to use this color or a similar one for your content creation, as it will be considered as background and will be removed from the screen. So let's keep green. Back to OBS now. So if I click on the whiteboard scene, OBS is now capturing the display where I have put the Klaxoon whiteboard. And if I show the Microsoft whiteboard on the same display, that's what OBS will be capturing. Great, we're almost there. The next thing to do is to add one additional scene. Let's go to plus and let's call it transparent whiteboard with camera. In the newly created scene, I want to add two sources, the camera and the whiteboard. However, there's a little trick here. I won't add the sources, but the scenes that I have created with the source inside, and you'll understand in a moment why. Let's go to the empty scene 
and in sources we add scene as a source so i will add my webcam as the first source and then another source that will be my other scene the whiteboard you see that the whiteboard is in front of me it's definitely not transparent let me hide the source for a moment so you can see me now we're going to apply the green screen effect to the whiteboard source. However, instead of applying it to the whiteboard itself, we will apply the filter to the scene. Applying filters to the scene instead of the source will keep the source filter free. That means we will be able to reuse the source unfiltered for other scenes if needed. Using nested scenes is a best practice on OBS. So let's right click on whiteboard, go to filters, select plus and then select chroma key. By default, the key color type is green. And since I've used a typical green screen color for my Klaxon background, you see that the chroma key is already working well. However, if I instead select the Microsoft whiteboard, this green doesn't work. The best thing to do is to click on it and then select custom. Then go to key color and select color. From here, click on pick screen color and then go to the whiteboard or any other portion of the screen where the background color is displayed. Click on it and automatically you will have the exact color that you want to get rid of. Now you're seeing a completely black screen, meaning that the software has removed everything. What we need to do is to adjust these parameters. I'll turn the similarity down to a very low value, such that the background color is removed and also colors that are very close to it. We'll have to play with the settings to make sure that the whiteboard is clean enough and at the same time doesn't distort too much the colors of the content. Here you see that probably the similarity is too high, since in the toolbar at the bottom we are removing some colors that are not part of the background. Let's try to fix it. And I'll move this on the side so I can see when the color appears again. That's too much. I think that's good. Now this whitish color appears again. Let's do the same for the Klaxon board. I don't want to lose the filter that I apply to this board, so let me rename this one as Microsoft Whiteboard. I will duplicate it and call it Klaxoon. You don't have to do that, you just pick your preferred whiteboard and create only one scene with it. As you see the whiteboard still looks green because the background color is different from the key color we've chosen before. So let's right click, go to filters and let's change the key color for this board. Go to select color, pick screen color, and now we have chroma keyed the Klaxon board. We see that there is still a little green around the word board. We may have to turn the similarity a little bit up to remove more shades of green. That could do the job. And you can fine tune it until you're happy. Now we want to get rid of all the icons at the bottom and also the controls and the address bar here so that we only leave the transparent whiteboard. We can do that by cropping the display source in OBS and making it bigger. Click on Alt. Let's do the same for the Microsoft whiteboard. Let me introduce a new source as a scene, a nested scene, with the new Klaxoon whiteboard scene that we've just created. Now the scene is there, but you still see me. And that's because we have applied the chroma key filter to the Klaxoon whiteboard scene. Great, we are now ready to draw. That's it if you're using the whiteboard on your computer. It works great with a drawing pad like the Wacom Intuos that I have. However, if you don't have a drawing pad, you can obtain the same result with an iPad. You can mirror the iPad on the computer by using hardware or software. Today I'm going to use an app that's called Let's View. I'll be linking the tutorial up here as soon as I make it. So let's create a new scene that I will call iPad Whiteboard. And here I will include the display capture source. This is already my iPad screen that's been mirrored on my desktop. I will crop the image to make it fit the whiteboard only. And now I'll make it fit the screen. Same as before, we have to select the chroma key color. Filters, chroma key, and let's select custom color, pick screen color, and we're good to go. Back to the scene with the camera, let's add a new source and let's put the scene that we just created. Here we go. 
The nice thing with the iPad is that you can draw with your finger if you don't have a stylus. Let's try to do that. If you don't have a white wall behind you, but instead you have background with different objects, shapes and colors, then this may be quite distracting for your audience and the content may be difficult to read, like in this case. But no worries, there's always a solution. We can blur part of the background with an OBS plugin that's called Stream Effects. I'll soon post a tutorial in the card up here. And you'll also find the links to all the videos that I mentioned in the description below. So let's go see what we can do. Let's take the My Webcam scene and add a filter. If you've installed the plugin, then the blur filter will appear here. Click on it. In the type, select Dual Filtering, as this is the least resource consuming. And then let's apply a mask. Let's keep region as mask type. And with these controls, we can crop the blurred area. I'm cropping from the left and just blurring the part that I want to hide. The border here is very sharp, but we can make it smoother with feather area. Let's now see how it looks in the transparent whiteboard and camera scene. It looks pretty good. It's much more readable. Let's now look at how a transparent whiteboard can enhance our video calls. I'd like to divide the uses into three cases. The first one is live content creation. You use this if you want to write and create content as you speak. The second case is when you facilitate with content that has been prepared in advance. The third case, which is my preferred one, is when you do a hybrid solution using a mix of content that you prepared in advance with some live real-time content creation. Let's see some example of the three cases. Live content creation is the most difficult one. The limitation is that it's tough to create content and speak at the same time. And also to make the content beautiful, it requires time that you don't have while you live facilitate. As an example, I can write, it's difficult. Well, it took me a few seconds to write it and I had to stay in silence. And it was very easy for you to get distracted in the meantime. Also, it can happen that if I draw like an arrow, I go above my head and maybe I make a mistake, a typo, so I have to delete something. And all these things take time. And that's just for writing. If we want to draw icons, for example, that becomes even harder to do. So let's say I want to do an alarm clock just to say that it takes time. Well, you see how long it's taken me to do a very simple thing. And if I want to beautify it and maybe do some shadowing, well, this will take me even longer. So I would use this live content creation only for writing keywords or maybe asking a question to the audience or capturing a word cloud. The opposite case is when we use content that is fully prepared in advance. That can be before the meeting or if you're capturing things that are happening during the meeting but you don't have an active role in that session, then you can draw things during the meeting but while other people are not seeing it. I'll give you an example of this with a recap of the first part of this tutorial, showing you some content that I have created in advance. As a first step, I ask you to download and install OBS Studio. If you're not familiar with it, I ask you to watch my video tutorial. As you see, I was able to include an image as content, as well as to draw some icons and beautify my writing. Then I ask you to create scenes. A scene with the camera and a scene with the display capture. Then we open the whiteboard and we've chosen the background color. We've seen cases for Klaxoon and Microsoft Whiteboard. And then we went back to OBS and we selected a, a chroma key color that helped us making the board transparent. We then cropped the size of the display capture to define our working area. I think that was pretty nice, but it lacks a little bit of dynamics. So what I like to do is to prepare nice content in advance and then enrich it with simple content creation while I'm live. Let's take the same case, but add some live content creation. For example, here I can draw a simple YouTube icon while I'm talking. And I'm asking you to watch my video tutorial in case you don't know OBS yet. Then here I can draw an arrow 
Then in step 2 I've asked you to open the whiteboard and choose the background color. And I can highlight the importance by drawing a rectangle and make it at pink, because this is a very important point. And so forth, moving on to the next steps. By doing so, you give your audience the impression that you're doing things on the spot, and at the same time you can use content that you prepared in advance. Beautiful icons, images, even videos. I think this will add so much engagement to your next meeting. And there are plenty of other ideas to use the transparent whiteboard. Not just recaps, but also presenting an agenda, or drawing milestones, or showing a process or a pathway. Just draw your cool stuff in advance, and then live draw arrows, containers, and easy stuff. Great, we're all set! The only thing that we need to do now is to start the virtual camera and turn on our Teams or Zoom video call and select the OBS virtual camera as a camera input. And here I am on Zoom. If you like this video, consider subscribing. What you can do for you right now is to watch this next video to further enhance your productivity and communication skills. See you in my next digital tip.